such a lovely dog. We're all a bit hunted out today, folks. We've just done three days solid, haven't we, Bob, eh? So I'm going to tell you a story. It's a true yarn, which is full of bullshit. Yeah, oh, nine years ago now, I suppose it was, up Holyoke Clearing in the Abel Tasman National Park. That's where I grew up as a child. That's where I first got my first pig. and I learned a lot up there. My dad was a ranger up there many years ago for the parks board before it came doc. But anyway, I was back up there about nine years ago at Holyoke Clearing and I had one dog with me. I had a reasonable pig on my back and I run into this guy, this American guy, called Chuck. I was just heading back to the, the uh, well, it was a shelter back then, they've got a hut there now, but it's just a bit of corrugated iron with a wee fireplace and a bunk. And uh, oh, Chuck was kitted out, man. He had camo, he had big shiny boots, a great big knife on him, 7mm rifle with a massive scope on the back, you know packing all the, all the bits and pieces. Quite a big man too. And uh, he saw my pig and he goes, that's a fine hog you got there boy. Done a fair bit of hogging myself back in Texas. And I said to him, oh yeah, cool. What sort of dogs do you use? I'm interested to know about dogs in other countries. Don't use dogs boy, use my bare hands and a knife. I said, you serious? Hell yeah. Chase them down, run them down. You keep on running off them hogs, eventually they'll get tired tackle them, if they're small a hog time and take them back to the ranch and if they're uh, big ones then they just get the knife I sort of thought about that and I thought it sounds like bullshit but he tells a good yarn I said really? Hell yeah boy I said what's the biggest one you've ever got? 450 pounds I said you wrestled that with our dogs yeah sure did I said it's amazing he goes yeah I was in the armed forces man and my dad was in Nam. I was trying to work out how old he was because he wasn't that old, but I said, oh, okay. And uh, I said, what else do you hunt? Bears. I said, how do you hunt those? With dogs? You shoot them? Or you use a bow and arrow? Rational them? Kill them with bare hands? Or use a knife sometimes? I said, really? Last one I did was a grizzly bear. I was out there fishing and uh, I'd gone up a place my grandpa used to take me and this grizzly bear came out saw me come straight towards me. All I had on me was my little Swiss Army pocket knife. I took that blade out there, I cut a slit in there, I stuck my hand up inside his diaphragm and I pulled his heart out. Killed it dead. I said, awesome man, wow. Unbelievable, never heard anything like it. You're amazing. Yeah, it runs in my family. We all grew up in the bush. We know how to handle ourselves. I said, well that's cool. He said, what sort of dangerous animals you have here in New Zealand? I said, well, we don't really have anything that's dangerous. I said, wasps sting you in the bush sometimes, and that really hurts. Caterpillar spider, but I've never been bitten. The stinging nettle, that hurts. I've been knocked over by a boar once, and I got this bruise on my shin, and that hurts sometimes, but nothing life-threatening. They do kill dogs occasionally. During the uh, roar, sometimes a stag will get pissed off and might have a crack at you, but we've got nothing really dangerous other than the, uh, the bush devils. The bush what? The bush devils. What the goddamn hell's a bush devil? I said, well, you'd never would have heard of a bush devil before, uh, Chuck, because we're not allowed to talk about them, because it would ruin and destroy our tourist industry here in New Zealand. What are you talking about? I said, well, the bush devils kill probably, I don't know, a couple of hundred tourists every, every year in New Zealand. We lose at least that. You're shitting me, man. I said, no, no. What do they look like? I said, well, they're about the size of a cat. They've got a sort of a brush tail on them. And they've got these sharp claws and they, they go for blood. So only what they'll do is they'll run up your leg and they'll go for your carotid artery here, your jugular. And they'll bite that and you'll bleed out within 40 seconds. You'll be dead. No goddamn way. Straight up, mate. It happens all the time. Or if you're a big man like you, they'll go for your femal artery. They'll just go up and bite you around the groin. And you'll still bleed out within 40 seconds. Well, how the goddamn hell do you know where them bush devils are? I said, well, that's the problem. You don't. They're nocturnal. They only come out at night. And uh, sometimes, if you're lucky, you might hear the noise they make before they attack. But normally, it's too late by then. Well, what sort of noise do they make? I said, they go... <coughs> so, well, how the hell do you kill them, them, them mothers? I said, well, there's only one way to kill a bush devil. You know that little thing on your Swiss Army pocket knife that's used for taking the stones out of horses' hooves? Yeah, I know what that is. I said, well, you take that out, and you've got to wrestle a bush devil. I said, you'd be good at this, because you can wrestle bears and boars. 
and you've got to drive it into the temple right there. You can't use a knife, you've got to use a pin. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. An old uh, bushman told me that story, and it's worked for me. I've killed all oh, three so far. Yeah, so that's what you've got to do. But uh, a knife's not really much good, because you pull out a big knife, and they basically run up your arm and up the knife and go for your jugular, it's all over. Anyway, listen, mate, I've got to go out for a hunt. I'm heading out now with the dog, and uh, I'll be back later on tonight. So just keep the door shut. Please keep the fire going while I'm away. I want to come home to a cold hut and uh, I'll see you when I get back. And yeah, keep that door shut because you don't want anything coming inside the hut. <laughs> see ya. So I snuck out the hut and I went about oh, 20 metres away from the hut and I just waited silence inside the hut. And then I made the first noise <laughs> absolute silence. 15 metres closer. old Chuck started talking. Oh Lord have mercy on my soul. Lord Jesus we, Jesus Christ, I am so sorry. Forgive me for all the sins I have committed. I couldn't believe this guy. Eh? He was actually shitting himself. It was working good. I got right up close to the hut this time. <coughs> oh Lord. And he started to pray. Dear Lord, please forgive me for that thing I did to Becky, my cousin, when she was only 13 years of age. I didn't, we didn't know it. We were only kids. Okay, I was a little bit older, but I, I shouldn't have to have done that. And please forgive me for that. And then he started talking about all his sins. Oh, man. He had a pretty good history, old uh, Chuck. He'd been a bad boy. And it all came out, and I was hearing it all. But I decided this was fun, so I got up closer to the door of the hut this time, right next to the door, and I added something to it. I went, <laughs> This time I scratched the door. I could peer through the door just a little bit. Just enough to see Chuck with his legs up like this. But the cool thing about it was, he had his Swiss Army pocket knife out and he had that little thing out for getting stones out of horses' hooves. So I thought I'd up this a bit and I'd add a new, a new sound that uh, possums don't actually make. Or bush devils to, to Chuck. I went... And then I went. <laughs> and I could see through the door and peeing himself. And it was going right through the bunk and onto the floor of the hut. And that's the time that I opened up the door and said, Hey Chuck, you alright there mate? He looked up at me and he just, his face was completely white. He's like, God damn man, was that you? Was that you doing that? I said, yeah, Chuck, it was me, man, sorry. But I figured you told a few stories, so I'd make up a story of my own about bush devils. You bastard! God damn, you got me a good one, man. Don't you ever tell anybody that story about Becky, my cousin. I said, hey, Chuck, what goes on in the bush stays in the bush. Now put the billy on, we'll have a brew. Now call me mean, but uh, Chuck stayed with me for the next day or two after that, and uh, I took him up to Holy... Oak clearing to the top, and then we went up to Castle Rock, and I actually found him a deer, which he did shoot. wasn't a very fantastic animal, but he came out and he wrote to me twice when he got back to Texas. So, um, if you're watching this chart, remember, bud, what goes on the bush stays in the bush. <laughs> That's this week's Tuesday's vlog, folks. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, be good out there. And Chuck, if you can't be good, be careful. See you later. Where's Bob Bob? Yeah, Bob! Oh, you're over there. Come on, Bob. Put your bag it off. That's a good boy. Oh, you're a good dog, aren't you? Bob's a good dog. Everybody needs a good dog like Bob.